Hi, my name is Bruce Gifford. I love movies and I love video games and I plan to make some reviews on this channel. After all, I practically go to two movies every Saturday. Hopefully the first two reviews will be Interstellar and Big Hero 6 since I'm going to see them on Saturday. But first I wanted to do something a little different. You see, when you go to the movies as often as I do, there's bound to be some crazy things that happen in the movie theater. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to count down the 20 craziest things that happened to me while in the movie theater. So number 20 is a little instant I thought was pretty funny. I went to see Noah and there was this old couple behind me. So in this one instant in the movie, Noah gets punched out by this giant fallen angel that's covered in hardened molten lava. and the screen goes black, it goes silent, just like most films are when a main character gets knocked out, it just fades to black, complete silence for a moment before he regains consciousness. And in that moment of black silence, this old lady behind me, <laughs> she says this, I don't remember that from the Bible. <laughs> Alright, so number 19, uh, my dad, my sister and I, we went to... Dream House. Honestly, I was hoping for it to be good, but uh, uh, yeah, Dream House is not that good of a film. Trust me. <laughs> it's just, you're expecting a horror, a horror movie, and uh, well, it's not a horror movie at all. It's It really isn't. It's pretty bad, though. It's. Uh. Anyway. We're alone, we're practically the only ones in the, in the theater, except for like one group behind us and then this uh, group of four teens that uh, come in pretty late into the uh, trailers and sit about in front and to the right of us. And of course it's, it's two guys and two girls and it's the kind of annoying teen girls that will scream at almost anything. I, I just had a feeling it was going to be terrible, this was going to be a horror movie, and it was going to be terrible because of this constant screaming. Because they were screaming at every little horror trailer there was before the movie. Every little jump scare, every little teeny creepy thing, they would scream loud during the trailers. And that is very annoying and tends to happen to PG-13 R movies. We didn't have to worry too much because there was no scares in the movie. The movie was not a horror movie. So the girls did not scream. You know what did happen though? Right after the film was done, when usually in a horror movie they have one last jump scare or one last scare, and since this is not a horror movie, there was no last scare at all. But that did not stop the guys. No, it did not. So. So you know what they did? As soon as the screen went to black and the credits started rolling, the two guys in the group did something like this. Really? They got out of their seats, they screamed, waved their hands high above their heads and ran out of the theater screaming like imbeciles. They screamed down the hall, they screamed out into the mall, all the way out into the parking lot to their cars. Okay, number 18 was super annoying. This is probably one of the worst experiences I've had with talkers in the movie theater. It was last year when uh, I when we saw Insidious Chapter 2. Oh god. Basically this is what happened. The movie starts off right where the first film left off. Unfortunately it seems as though one of the guys had not seen the first one, but the other guy did. And so what happens during the first 30 minutes of the film? What happens is the guy who had seen the first one explains everything that happened in the first one to his buddy really loudly. Yeah, the first 30 minutes of our film, despite many people shushing them, he just kept talking. 
He was going to explain every single little detail of the first movie to his friend because his friend did not see it. If you're going to do that, why didn't you do it like in the car ride to the theater? Or why didn't you show the movie to your friend so that he wouldn't be lost through the first part of Insidious Chapter 2? Why do you have to explain it while in the theater? And so after that first 30 minutes is done, you know what happens? The, the guy that had been explaining the first one to his friend suddenly asks, Okay, what did I miss? So you know what happens? The friend explains the first 30 minutes of Insidious Chapter 2 to the person who explained the f whole first movie to him. Uh, 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 <laughs> why? <laughs> oh, number 17 is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Loved it. It was my favorite movie when I saw it, but now I've got two other favorite movies right now, uh, Fury and Gone Girl. But we had uh, Talkers again. Yay. First, we had one person, one girl sit behind us. She was quiet throughout the film, but uh, it was a pretty packed theater, so this group of other two, there's you can sit about four in this uh, small row, and this group of two decides, oh, can we sit there? And th they sit right behind us. And of course, they uh, do the typical thing where people talking about the movie and say, trying to predict what's going to happen and that kind of thing. You know, the kind of thing that lots of people do in horror movies, like, don't look behind you and, ooh, he's going to die and all that kind of stuff. It was during Dawn of the Ape, Planet of the Apes, that's what they did. They talked the entire time like that. They even seemed to be trying to be movie critics of some sort because they were trying to compare the film to uh, Lion King. Yeah, they, they were calling the, the bad ape, uh, yeah, they were calling him uh, Scar. No, not Scar. No, because Scar is actually the the Lion and Lion King, the bad one. No, they weren't calling him Scar, they were calling him Scarface. They were saying, he, he seems so much like Scarface, you know, from Lion King, how, oh, he's, he's like Scarface. And, huh. <laughs> okay, number 16 is another incident with talkers, but for some reason this one was acceptable and kind of funny. Alright, the movie was No Good Deeds, and yeah, there Admittedly, there is some good acting, and I like the the actors and a actors in it. But there are some really stupid things that happen. Some really stupid characters. It gets to the point where you keep asking, "Why don't you do this?" or "What about this?" or "You could have easily done that," or "Why don't you kill him when you have a chance?" and all that kind of stuff. Right? That's exactly. The people behind me did. They would just flat out tell you she should be doing that or he should be doing that or why oh he's gonna die and all that kind of, she's gonna die and all that kind of stuff, right? But for this time, for this one instant, because it was so many stupid characters in the movie, it was acceptable and I think it was kind of funny. Actually, a lot of people would just start clapping, like, when she finally fought back towards the end of the movie. There was one of them, one of these clappers, would literally just do this. <laughs> so what I saw, I was, I was looking, I was like, All right, is she going to clap at this part? And she's like, just, 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 she would just do one clap. <laughs> okay, 15 is another small little incident. And it involves an animated film and a little kid that says something that I couldn't, couldn't believe came out of his mouth. Okay, so the movie was Brave. There's this one part where our main hero is uh, seeing this chaos that happens um, in this huge brawl. And she just yells, SHUT UP! There's this huge moment of silence, right? Kid behind us just suddenly blatantly says, well, at least she didn't say the F word. <laughs> um, 
Okay, it's a PG animated film, but she's not going to say the F word anyway, but oh, okay, you tell him, kid. <laughs> okay, 14 is another movie this year. The movie was The Signal. Um, it only came out in a select theaters, and I was surprised our theater actually got it, because uh, we have three theaters, but um, none of them will do duplicates. Basically, it's just enough to have a pretty wide range of movies. At the same time, they don't really like to take risks with, risks with uh, more unknown movies. But I was glad that they were able to get uh, The Signal and Chef and a few other ones. I, anyway, I, I enjoyed The Signal. It's a little crazy, but there's a lot of really good stuff in it. Unfortunately, the only other group in the theater with us did not know what they were getting into. Now, when you see the trailer, you can see that it's going to be an artistic film. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be out there. And that's what the signal is. Unfortunately, they... I don't know. They must not have seen the trailer. But what? But then again, why would they come to the movie if they'd never even heard about it, right? So, I don't know. But they clearly did not get what this film was supposed to be. There was this one point in the movie it was about halfway through and 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 it was really interesting and suddenly the the girl in the group one of the girls she just she just yells out loudly does this movie suck this movie sucks doesn't it does this movie suck it sucks really loudly then they would all laugh at things that aren't supposed to be funny. You can get some of the moments because there's some slow motion things, some things that are cut into pieces almost like a trailer would, and some things could come off as cheesy. I, I get that. But to blatantly just, just suddenly just laugh out loud, I have never been in a theater where something horribly cheesy happens where people laugh at it. And this one is only remotely cheesy, and they're just laughing out loud, just like hysterically. They're like dying on the floor laughing. One of the points <laughs> is this part where one of the guys has like these... Well, I don't want to give anything away if you don't see it. But there's this moment where someone does like a Hulk smash, and it goes in slow motion, and the ground cracks and people get flown in the air and all that kind of stuff and it's in slow motion and it's like chopped into little pieces almost like a trailer would it would like show a brief instant going up in slow motion then it would cut then it would cut and then it would show a little bit more and a little slow motion and then it would cut and then it would it was almost like what a trailer would and they were laughing at this and there was this and all I could think about is wow I remember going to Transformers <laughs> Age of Extinction and there was this one really bad cheesy moment that I held in my laughter so that I wouldn't be rude to the group of people that was completely full. I mean the theater was completely full of people which makes sense because the thing grossed a billion dollars worldwide. A billion dollars. <laughs> but anyway, there's this one by where Mark Wahlberg gets his daughter taken, and he's like, no! And he's like, it's slow motion, and he slams down into the road, because that's what you do when your daughters get kidnapped. You fall to your knees in slow motion and punch the ground. Not a single person laughed at that. No, everyone was quiet. In fact, I think there was some claps at the end of the movie. But in Signal, when it's way when it's not as cheesy, it's better and it's honestly a person sacrificing themselves so that their friends could survive, we get laughter from that. So <laughs> I don't know, people people are strange. Thirteen, I believe. Uh this was another movie's 10 thing, and this time it had nothing to do with the audience. It was just a complete, crazy coincidence of something that happens. Alright, we went to see Source Code. We never got to finish the movie. Literally, there was only about 10 minutes left of the film.
but we did not get to see it all because of something that happens. It's a point in the movie where Jake Gyllenhaal goes into the past the last time because he's figured out everything, he's gonna save the train and all this kind of stuff. Basically gets out of his seat, the girl he's with goes, says, what are you doing? And he turns to her, and it's almost like a close-up of his face, and he's like, I'm gonna save the world. Suddenly everything goes black. The lights turn on, and the alarms go off. Fire alarms! So we had to evacuate the building, and we never got to see the first, the last ten minutes of the film in theaters. Thankfully, HBO was free at one point, and we got to see Source Code, the ending, my sister and I, but my dad has n not seen the last ten minutes of Source Code. So he has no idea what happens. <laughs> Okay, number 12 is another film this year, and it is Neighbors. Ever went to a comedy where the worst person that could ever be seated behind you just so happens to sit behind you? No, I'm not kidding. This is the worst person you could have in a comedy. He was horrible. Basically, this would happen every single time there was a joke. What? And then, about a minute and a half later, after the joke is done, this is what he would do. <laughs> He's right behind me. Could have sat anywhere else, and he decides to sit behind me. There's so many moments where something ridiculous would be said in the movie and it would be repeated and then finally you'll get what they're having like there's this one part where okay if you've seen the neighbors um, there's this one point where one of them says dicks in our hands and then another guy goes like he has this big epiphany he's like dicks in our hands and then everyone's like looking at him strange and then another one goes sticks in our hands and all this kind of thing and it does that for a little bit before you realize what is what he what his idea is and of course the guy behind me just goes what these guys are stupid what, what's going on what the what the hell and then of course the, and then I'm, if he would have waited for the joke to explain itself then a minute and a half later, he goes, <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> thankfully, I got to see it twice this year. And thankfully, the second time I went, the one time I went with my dad, we had no incidents, and so I could watch the movie without annoyance. Okay, number 11. Uh, this is another one this year. This is a little funny incident. I just thought I might mention. It happened pretty recently. Um, we went to see St. Vincent and no, there was no talkers, there was nothing annoying that happens except there is one woman who had their cell phone on and of course it rings about 10 minutes into the movie. Except the ringtone. Okay, this was a woman that was really old she was white, and she had this walker. She was like about, I don't know, 70, 80 years old. And her cell phone rings, and the ringtone is this hardcore gangster rap. Throwing out F-bombs and N-words, in, and it just goes crazy. And it's just super loud. It was like the, the loudest you can get your cell phone. And this whole lady with the walker has it in her purse, and she, she's like, Whoo! and she's like, like, really, <laughs> and then so she takes it out of her purse, and it's, of course, it gets louder because it's out of her purse now, and she has to get up with her walker, and she hurries up out of the theater with her walker and the phone just blaring, and... <laughs> Okay, if I decide if I decide this video is too long and I split it, then that's the f end of the first half. If I decide not to split it, then you won't see this at all. So <laughs>